Hi, I'm Angus Logan, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the production of ammonia, NH3, from nitrogen and hydrogen by a method called the Haber-Bosch process. The main concepts we'll touch on are chemical equilibria and catalysis. So what's the motivation for this? Well, nitrogen is widely used um, as a fertiliser and also in fine chemicals, uh, such as pharmaceuticals, and also, as I'll come to in a second, in explosives. The obvious source of nitrogen is the atmosphere. The atmosphere contains 80% nitrogen, but unfortunately it's N2, which contains a very strong triple bond, and is inert, and so we can't use it directly. We need to convert it to a form we can use, and in this case, it's ammonia. The Haber-Bosch process was developed by the Germans during World War I, as they lacked access to a source of nitrate to make explosives for the war effort. The British controlled the trade from the Chilean salt mines, and so the Germans enlisted the help of two chemists, Haber and Bosch, to develop this process. Um, they were subsequently awarded the Nobel Prize for their efforts in this reaction, and as we'll come to later, it's an incredibly important reaction to us today. So the reaction itself takes one molecule of nitrogen and three molecules of hydrogen and reacts them together to form two molecules of ammonia and heat. And the K in the middle is the equilibrium constant, and that refers to which side is favoured. So does it favour the reactants or does it favour the products? If K is greater than one, then the reaction favours the product. If K is less than one, the reaction favours the starting material. Now, as you can see, heat is produced in this reaction, so it's a favourable reaction, it wants to happen, but unfortunately, it's a very, very slow reaction at room temperature, um, and so it isn't, doesn't actually happen to any detectable amount. Now, an obvious way to do this to increase the reaction rate is to increase the temperature. But by Le Chatelier's principle, which says that a reaction will balance out any changes to it, if we put heat in, it will start to favour the reactants more and we can't do that. Now there are two ways around this, which is what we use today. If we increase the pressure, we can see there are four molecules of starting material and then only two molecules of product. So if we increase the pressure, we increase the concentration of starting materials, which drives the reaction towards the products. Now, as I said before, this is a favourable reaction, heat is produced, and so what we can do is introduce a, a catalyst to make this reaction faster and so keep the reaction going. In this case, what we use is a very simple iron catalyst, it's a solid catalyst, very simple, and that actually drives the reaction. Any unused um, starting materials are recycled, and today the Haber-Bosch process can convert 97% of its inputs into useful nitrogen as an output. Now, as a measure of how important this reaction is us today, Due to its use as a fertiliser, nearly 50% of the nitrogen in your body comes from the Haber-Bosch process. And the Haber-Bosch process itself consumes 3% of the world's total energy consumption. So it's an incredibly important um, reaction to this day. I hope this is interesting and thank you very much.